Throughout the state and across the country, you'll find groups of dedicated individuals who are working to conserve and protect our natural resources. One example is the Gills Creek Watershed Association. Today, we're learning more with their executive director, Bailey Slice Parker. Bailey, thanks so much for taking a little bit of time to explain about the Gills Creek Watershed Association. And before we get started, we really need to, to go back to the beginning. What exactly is a watershed and specifically Gills Creek Watershed? I'm so glad you asked. What is a watershed? So simply put, we can think of a watershed as just a precipitation catchment where wherever it rains, the water all drains down into one single body of water. And we all live in a watershed. We do. So a watershed can be as small as your backyard or even as large as the Mississippi River watershed, which covers like 40% of the contiguous United States. <laughs> ah, what about Gills Creek watershed? Is it a relatively large area? It is relatively large, especially since it's based on a creek. Um, so the Gills Creek watershed starts up around the sesquicentennial state park area, just north of that, and goes all the way down down through forest acres, through the city of Columbia, into the Congaree River. So it covers a lot of area. Now we're at a very particular location. This is a location of a restoration project, the Croson Road Restoration Project. Uh, what was the motivation behind this project? So initially, this project was in our watershed management plan. So the Gills Creek Watershed Association came up with a plan of priority projects and places that could use restoration. Um, and this was in that plan and had been for many years. But the particular thing that changed was the flood of 2015. Oh my goodness, such devastation yes. uh, in many places yes. with that tremendous flooding. And it really did have an impact in this local area. But on the bright side of things, it has led to this improvement project. Yes, it really made this a priority, not just for the community residents, but for the Gills Creek Watershed Association, City of Columbia and Richland County. They really championed moving this project to the top of the list and putting the funding behind it that was needed to make it happen. Fantastic. So we know a little bit of the why. Let's talk about the what. So uh, you've shared some information with me. I believe there's kind of five benefits or goals associated with this. So we'll kind of run through those starting with encouraging native vegetation. Native plants are so important. And for so many reasons, the native plants that we used in this project were plants that would have evolved here in this space over millions of years. So firstly, they're equipped to handle being inundated under flood or to handle times of drought, extreme heat, as we can see today. Yes, I think we picked the hottest day of the year <laughs> to film this segment. We certainly <laughs> did. Um, but um, also, they evolved with the insects and the wildlife that depend on them for food. So they serve dual purposes. You yeah. are right, lots of benefits. And then another goal is going to be to stabilize the banks along the creek. And the, there is a pretty decent sized slope here <laughs> and without protection, it's going to wash into the creek. Mm -hmm. So we used mechanical um, ways to stabilize and also the vegetation itself. So nature-based solutions are such an important um, aspect of this. And one of those are the rocks that we're standing on. So we incorporate rocks into the creek bank to slow water down and stop erosion. But we also use the plants themselves. These native plants have roots that go deep into the ground the roots act as the rebar and they really stabilize the soil. Oh, what a good analogy, <laughs> like the rebar within a human built structure. Exactly, they, they really serve the same purpose. And as you mentioned, uh, even though there are kind of five overarching goals, we're getting multiple benefits from the different things that have been implemented. So these rock structures are also slowing down the water and that less velocity means less chance it's gonna move that soil down into the creek. Um, now, along with that stormwater runoff, we see uh, bacteria levels that become a problem. In fact, um, bacteria pollution is the number one reason that our streams are impaired in South Carolina. So what are we doing here to work on that? So here we have slowed the water down somewhat. So in these particular rock shoots, we have these steps where the water hits each individual step and slows down. But probably what the viewers can't see is that there are gaps and there are smaller rocks incorporated into the backsides of these steps. So as the water flows down, it is allowed to infiltrate into the soil where our soil microbes 
and fungus and native plants can actually filter that water. So it adds to the groundwater as pure, cleaner water, as opposed to just going immediately into the creek and becoming potentially flood water and also polluted with bacteria. So we're helping helping those natural processes to occur, yes. um, even though this is a man-made structure and uh, slowing that water down, allowing it time to, to infiltrate, which is also going to have a, a benefit with reducing some flooding because we're not having that go directly into this creek where it could cause that water level to rise. Yes, as you as we talked earlier, we are in a developed urbanized spot. So everywhere around us is covered in pavement and impervious surfaces. So Ooh, that's a fancy term. We might Ooh. need to talk a little bit about that. <laughs> Non-porous. So uh, porous surfaces allow the water to infiltrate, allow it to seep in. The impervious surfaces just wash the water right off. So it immediately right. goes right to the creek. The creek rises, we have a flood. Yes. And that can be dangerous. Um, Absolutely. Very dangerous for, for us. So there are so many motivating factors that lead to a project like this. And we also need to mention, we want to encourage aquatic habitat. Yeah. So there are things that you have done um, to, there are some rock vein structures, I believe, that are kind of going to um, agitate that water, providing necessary oxygen for critters mm -hmm. that live in the creek. The rock veins agitate the water, so increase the oxygen level, but they also slow the water down. And just having a little spot to hide behind for those um, macroscopic or microscopic little creatures just increases the diversity of the wildlife and the biology in our creek. And even though we might not see things today, um, this creek is a corridor along which various forms of wildlife might travel. And uh, why is that important, especially in our urbanized areas? So we have so much space that's built up and urbanized and humans are taking up as much space as possible. But within that urban space, we have uh, the forest acres, the lakes, Arcadia Lakes, um, upstream of Gills Creek. Mm -hmm. And then downstream of Gills Creek, we have Congaree River and eventually Congaree National Park. So the wildlife that could call these larger um, green spaces home can use the Gills Creek Corridor as a way to travel safely without impacting humans or being impacted usually by humans to exactly. those spaces. Now this project is it's relatively small scale in the grand scheme of things, but would be large scale for an individual citizen. But I understand you ha there are actions people can take, uh, like your Watershed Champion Program. Yeah, it can be overwhelming when you think about so many problems all at once. So the best solution is to take small steps on an individual scale to make things better. So we created our Watershed Champion Program to show people exactly how to do that. So for you and me, maybe we have already incorporated these healthy, watershed um, aspects into our yards ourselves. The native plants, the impervious surfaces, maybe having a rain garden, and also providing food habitat and shelter for wildlife. Um, so the application to become a certified wildlife champion walks you through those steps. And whenever you are certified, um, you can apply and get a sign that you hang in your yard and show your neighbors and your friends exactly what you're doing in your yard to help uh, create a healthier watershed and maybe they would be inspired to do the same. Fantastic. It really is, um, it can be overwhelming, but it, there are so many things just an individual person can do and then collectively their efforts really make a difference. Thank you so much for giving us just a little glimpse of the Gills Creek Watershed Association. It's been enlightening learning about your endeavors and I wish you the best of luck as you continue through the future. Thank you, Teresa. It was an honor to speak with you.